What's up, ladies and gentlemen? I am Dylan, the Techno Giz Guy, and today I am showing you how to own your Audible library. So, in modern times, it's not a shock that companies sometimes lose the rights to media or books or shows or whatever, and even though you've already purchased that media, they just remove it from your account. They just take it. In my opinion, when you buy something, that product becomes yours. Even digital media, you have the right to back up elsewhere so that you may preserve it as long as you own that media. So today that's what we're doing. I'm showing you two pieces of software that I run in my home lab that have absolutely changed my life. I listen to a ton of audiobooks. I love reading and listening to stories, but I don't have the time to read, so I listen to audiobooks. Audible has been known for not paying the artists enough or Amazon being sketchy with certain things. They're just not the best platform if you are really caring about the author themselves. So the two programs that we are going to be looking at today are Libation and Audio Bookshelf. So Libation is a program that reaches out to Audible servers. It downloads the audiobooks that you have purchased that you own in your account, and then it converts them to an M4B file, which is much more usable than the AAX file that Audible downloads when you download from their site. So it downloads and it converts that, which strips away the DRM. So now you can use that file. Audio Bookshelf is a media front end, similar to Plex, but it's designed to work around audiobooks and podcasts. I don't personally use it for podcasts because I just have an app on my phone that I download the new episodes of whatever podcast I listen to. I listen to them, they get deleted. It works. But for audiobooks, I really like having my own self-hosted library of my books. That way I never have to worry about Audible being down, having issues, can't get into my account. They remove my book off of their platform due to some licensing issue. I never have to worry about that because all my books safely backed up. So let's jump right in and get to this. So I've already downloaded the files for these, but these are the websites. Both of these will be linked in the description down below and all that. You can read their guides and whatnot, but I'm just going to jump right in. You guys can follow along. I also would like to say while I'm jumping in to start Libation, Libation does have a Docker container. It runs on Linux, Mac, Windows, and Docker. However, the Docker container does not have any kind of GUI. You set all the settings up prior in a config file and it just periodically checks your account and downloads the books where you tell it to. If you're okay with that, that's fine. You can run the Docker container. The gentleman who makes Libation has a guide on that. For now, I'm just going to install Libation Bear on Windows as well as Audio Bookshelf. Audio Bookshelf also can run on Linux, Mac, Windows, and Docker. Audio Bookshelf does have a web UI, so no matter what you're running, you're just going to be running a service and then you're going to be interacting with that program through either the app on Android or iPhone or web browser and listening to your audio. I'm going to open the Libation zip folder and I'm just going to extract all the stuff to a nice folder called Libation. All right, once you have Libation installed, you're going to open up the folder and you're going to open up the application called Libation.exe. You probably are going to get a Windows smart screen. That's okay. Just click advance, click run anyway. It's just telling you that there's an unknown program trying to run. It's not a dangerous program. It's just not known to Microsoft. Although I am not a new user to Libation, I am going to click new user, returning user. This button is only for if you've already had Libation installed on your computer. So I'm going to say new because on this VM that we're doing for the video, I have never had Libation installed. I'm going to skip the guided tour because I don't really care. First thing I'm going to do is go to settings and I am going to actually switch where this saves. Normally this will save to your users folder slash Libation slash books. I'm going to, just for the sake of this video, set this to be a folder on the desktop called audiobooks so we can see it. Normally in my environment, all my audiobooks live on my NAS, but for this video, we're just going to do this as if you were doing this locally, you're just starting out in your home lab. Other than that, I'm not going to change any of these other settings. Uh, you can set the download and decryption settings, you can set the audio file settings so when it you know, converts that AAX file to an M4B, uh, you can change how that quality is. I just leave it how it is. I haven't had a problem with it yet. 
it's worked out fine for me. The only thing I do like to change is I like to change the folder either to my NAS or in this case, I'm setting it to the desktop. I'm going to click save on that. We're going to click the settings button again. We're going to click accounts. So for accounts, this is where the important part comes in. So you are going to first enter the country that you are in. So I'm in the US, so I'm going to enter US for my locale for Audible. And then you're going to want to put your Amazon slash Audible email address in here. It'll ask you for the password and the one-time code in a second. You can put an account nickname in here. I'm going to blur my email address out just so that way you guys don't send me a bunch of spam email to my personal email. Uh, you can, if you have the Audible app installed on your computer, you can just import your profile from that, but this is easy enough. But once you click save, it's going to come up with a little web page. I'm going to check keep me signed in. All right, so once you put your password in, it's going to ask you for a one-time code. If you have one-time code set up, I do, so I'm going to do that. Once you do, it's going to say scanning up here at the top, and in a second, all my books are going to pop up. So we're going to grab, we're going to grab 1984, we'll grab Buddhism, and just because uh, you should always ride with Jesus and God, we're going to grab the Bible. Why not? So you can see all you have to do to liberate the books is search for them, find the books you want, and just click the uh, traffic signal sign. If there's a PDF attached to that audiobook within Audible, whether it's an ebook copy or wallpapers or art or whatever, that will also get downloaded with the audiobook with this program, which is great. You don't lose anything. Also, if you want to just liberate your entire library, which is what I do, you can come up here and you can just click begin book and PDF back up 119 or however many you have remaining. So real quick, while this is downloading, I want to jump over here and we're going to install audio bookshelf and start looking at that. So on Windows, you just have an installer file. It's about the same on Linux and Mac as well. And then on Docker, it's just a Docker container that you can run. Yet again, you're going to get a Windows smart screen error. I'm going to leave all these settings how they are and just install audio bookshelf. And once it's done, I'm going to say launch and just open it up. Okay. I had to do a little reboot there. But if I close Libation now, you can see in the audiobooks folder, we have the books we downloaded. So you can see these are named, the book name, and then like a weird tag. For the next part of this, you're going to want to actually leave that tag in because similar to how Plex uses the movie name and the year to find the metadata, Audio Bookshelf is going to use that Audible tag to pull the metadata from Audible and save it locally. So. Now that we're done that, we've installed Audio Bookshelf while we were waiting. I'm going to double click the Audio Bookshelf banner down in the bottom. It's going to ask you to make an account. Please make a nice secure password. And then log in. It's going to ask you to add a library. Options you have are books and podcasts. I'm only going to do books because I don't do podcasts through this. For my metadata provider, I'm going to do audible.com. And just because I'm going to set this to a book icon. Because why not? For a folder, we're going to browse, go to my desktop here. We're going to browse, go to my desktop here, select the audiobook folder and create, and then scan. I don't usually mess with any of the scanning or metadata settings in Audiobookshelf. I've never felt the need to. If you feel the need to, go for it. They're there. So you can see now the four books that we have were detected with their artwork and metadata, which was not downloaded. So some of the files have the metadata embedded in them, like an MP3 file, but Audio Bookshelf actually does reach out to Audible or Google Books or whoever you selected as a metadata provider and attempt to pull that metadata. So that's why we leave those tags in there, or at least I do. And you can see these even pulled the only from Audible uh, branding because it's pulling the metadata for these books right from Audible. So here we can see the audio track, which is cool. You can see that M4B file. Uh, you can also see all of the individual chapters of the book, as well as their timestamps, which is really cool. You can jump right in. So if, if I wanted to jump into Deuteronomy, I could, or Genesis. Uh, and then playing this is really fast. So you'll see this. Show this is all local. This is Audible. 
Audible Studios presents the whole. So you can see that works great. So this is a fully self-hosted replacement for Audible. I do not even have the Audible app on my phone. I buy all my audiobooks on the Amazon app or on Audible's website, and then I have Libation running almost all the time, and it sees the audiobook hit, downloads it, puts it in my NAS, and Audio Bookshelf just grabs it. These two programs have fundamentally changed the way I listen to audiobooks. Right now, my production audio bookshelf server has actually had some issues for the last few weeks. I have been completely lost. I have been stuck listening to music. I actually had to download the Audible app and, down and listen to some of my books, which I did not like because my progress was not there. My bookmarks weren't there because I've been using audio bookshelf for about a year now. Uh, this program has gotten a lot of updates. It just works. It's a really good program. I mean, if you're into Plex and all that stuff and you're an audiobook person, Audio Bookshelf is absolutely the program you want in your system. They, they have an Android and an iOS app for Audio Bookshelf so you can stream these and download the books to your device. Same as Audible. It's a self-hosted Audible replacement. The only thing I will say about that is if you're on iOS, you do have to join the Betaflight system uh, because that app has not been fully approved by Apple for the App Store. If you're on Android, you get to just go download it, but that is something you have to deal with if you're an Apple user. All right, party people, that's the end of this video. So in this video, you guys learned how to back up the books that you own, that you have purchased through Audible, as well as have a nice, convenient, user-friendly front end that you can use to distribute those books to yourself or your family. You can make other user accounts in here by going to the settings. You can add users and you can give them different level of permissions and whatnot. You can also see what kind of activity so you can see who's listening to what. Audio Bookshelf, it should be added to your system. It supports MP3s, which is great because I have a couple of books that aren't real audiobooks. Um, one of those that comes up on the top of my head is Brandon Sanderson's Defending Elysium. That never even got a physical book release, let alone an audiobook release. The only reason I have an audiobook was because someone took the PDF that was on Brandon Sanderson's website and narrated it. They did a really good job narrating it, so I downloaded their YouTube video and I kept it. Audio Bookshelf handles that file just fine, treats it like any other audiobook. Uh, it doesn't have chapters, but I can manually add those in since I had to do it. Um, but yeah, so it's a great program. Absolutely wonderful. If you guys enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. If you have any comments or concerns or questions or anything you want me to, you want me to do for you, see. If you want to know how to do something, you want me to go into more detail, you want to explore home lab stuff, comment down below, guys. Subscribe if you like what you see. I got content coming. I'm shooting for Mondays and Fridays for content uh, delivery days, but we'll see how that works out. Uh, for now, Mondays and Fridays are the goal. Um, so, And we do tech stuff. We do home lab stuff. Anything with a computer chip, we're having fun. It's always a kick-ass party over here. So I am Dylan, the Techno Giz Guy. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.